Hello, I'm Jenny with GoBox Art Crate, and today we have a fun project that involves watercolor and a little bit of doodling and drawing, so I think it's going to be a lot of fun. This video I put out for Fossil Distance Learning Program, but any of you can use it. Fossil Distance Learning Program ordered a special kit from us, so you should have... I know some of you guys have seen these before. <laughs> This brings me right back to elementary school. So just a watercolor uh, tray with a brush. I picked this particular brand because I really liked the brush that came with these. Some of the others have brushes that are just really funky and, and not great to work with. So I wanted to have, have us uh, set it up right with a good brush. And the other thing you'll have is your watercolor paper. This is a nine by 12 sheet of watercolor paper. And then you will have, in your kit you guys have, um, you have three sheets of watercolor. We're only do, using one today, but I thought I'd throw some extras in there for you so you can do the project again if you want, or do something completely on your own, but having extra watercolor paper is always good. And then you'll wanna have a fine point Sharpie or some other permanent ink marker. I just have a little Micron marker. I know most of you guys have the fine point Sharpies. I could not find one here at home, <laughs> which is really weird because I have so many pens, but uh, somewhere in some random drawer, there's probably one. Uh, pencil will be good because we do a little bit of sketching at first, and this is totally optional, but it will help you. It'll come in handy with a lot of this stuff. Now on the pencil lines, You'll want to keep them all very, very light. So anytime you do watercolor painting and you're using pencil, it will smear with the pencil lead. And so what'll happen is you might paint yellow on and because it's got pencil lead on here, it'll turn kind of grayish, which can be frustrating. So you will want to keep your pencil lines light because we are going to uh, be painting over this. Let's have a look at what we're doing. Let me set this aside. So we're gonna do something like this. And this has obviously the watercolor, but all of this, these designs in here are so much fun and you can be really elaborate with these or you can keep it really simple. With this particular one, this, like, this sort of thing is very simple. The leaves are pretty simple. More elaborate things would be like the stripes and any of the more delicate designs. So you can design it how you want it to be. You can also go back and add designs after you've watercolored it. So when you're keeping up with me today, just plan on if you think you want to continue to add more ink, you can do that after the video is done and your watercolors dry. I also drew some candy corns on here because I thought that would be fun. So I'm going to set this over here. Now this is a project that I taught to my daughter's elementary school years ago. She's now 16, but I'll show you some of the things she did. She, nobody tell her. She probably would be very mad at me for showing her <laughs> elementary school art. But I thought it was so much fun. And see, she has a lot of different shapes and a lot of different designs. And here's another one that's even more elaborate. This might have been mine because it looks a little, I don't know. I don't know, maybe we worked together. <laughs> Cause I know some of these drawings look like mine, but I'll, I'll show you different things you can do. We'll, we'll look at these again just a bit later. But let's go ahead and grab our pencil to start. I'm gonna teach you the right way to draw a pumpkin. Now most people think it's just a circle with stripes and a stem, but to get a more 3D pumpkin, it's actually a little bit more involved than that. You know, I'm gonna actually go Let's see here, I'm gonna make my pencil lines a little darker so that you can see them on camera. I didn't even think about that. So what we do first is we draw this oval segment. So we're gonna go segment by segment and then finally we'll have some around the back and the stem, all that stuff. So let's drop down from the top of your paper, maybe about this far, it's about four inches. And we're gonna make kind of a skinny oval shape right in the center of the paper So like that. Remember, keep your pencil lines light. Oh, funny, funny ended up wavy. <laughs> I wanna make sure you can see one. Yeah, I can see it on camera. Good, okay. So there we've got, it's kind of an oval, could almost be like a leaf shape even. It can be a little bit pointy at the top. That's not a big deal. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go on this side and we're gonna actually, this shape, <clears throat> this is right here, this blue shape, it ends up being kind of like a banana. <laughs> so we're gonna start here, just, 
parallel this line. Keep your pencil lines light. I'm probably gonna remind you over and over. I'm gonna come down and connect. So that's that shape I said, oh, it's a banana. We're gonna mirror image that over here. So we're gonna make a reverse banana. Like so. That looks like, I don't know, this could be all kinds of things. I could turn it on its side. It could be a, a clam. You can make a pearl in it or it could be an eye. So many different things. So let's make another banana shape. This one I'm gonna curve up just a bit at the top and come down. Each of these little segments will get a little bit skinnier as we move away from the center because we're really looking at the curved sides of this. So this one we can see the full width of it, but each one of these we're gonna just be seeing less and less. Let's do another. I made a mistake. That happens. I'm gonna round that out just a little bit more. Okay, I could leave it like this, or I feel like I could go a little bit wider. Let's see. It'll just give me more room for designs. So see how each one they connect right back to the bottom? And I've got room to do one over here. This side's a little bit harder for me for some reason. I can't keep my lines straight. Well, you know, if you've ever tried to pick a pumpkin from the pumpkin patch, you know that a lot of times they're flat on one side or warped or have warts all over. <laughs> it's the fun of a natural product. Okay, that looks like a good size for my pumpkin. And now I'm gonna make the stem very, very easy. Just at the top here, I'm gonna come up. I like to make a curly Q stem, so I'm gonna go like this. So just make that. Now this side is gonna come up and just meet, just like this. Boink! You can even make the sound effect, why not? Here we go, boink! So it goes down to a real skinny point. And then I've got just enough room to suggest another segment of pumpkin, another one of these guys back here and here. And that will give me two extra areas to fill with patterns. Yay! Okay, so if your pencil lines are really dark, one thing you can do, you can go over them really lightly with an eraser. I've seen a lot of watercolorists do this. So you still wanna be able to see them, but they're gonna be not quite so intense. The more intense they are, the more they're going to mix with your watercolors. Now if you're using darker colors, like blue or purple, it shouldn't be a problem. But if you're a person who likes yellow and orange like me, you wanna get rid of a lot of these pencil lines. Just enough that you can still see where you're supposed to trace. So I'm just rubbing really lightly just to get the, the major part of these pencil lines off. I do this all the time because I usually have to sketch things out with pencil when I'm doing watercolor at least. With acrylic paint, I tend to just go for it. So there, I can see my outlines and now I'm ready to trace with my permanent marker. So yes, you'll want a permanent marker because if you don't use a permanent marker, as soon as you get paint on here, it's gonna start smearing all over and that will not be good. So let's see, let's go ahead and trace the stem. And when I redrew it, I made it a little bit better up at the top. It wasn't so great the first time around. Now I'll trace this one. Just take your time. I know you guys will do good. I've taught so many schools different forms of art. And uh, in my live studio I had for 10 years, I did a class every Saturday that was for younger people, uh, elementary school age, high school, whoever wanted to come. 
And I know the nice thing about you guys is you just go for it. When I say, hey, let's let's do this right here, I'll turn around and everybody will have done what they're supposed to do. Almost there. Hopefully you guys are doing good too. And I got a segment here and a segment here. Okay, so I'll let you guys catch up. You keep drawing. So there's different things you can do as you guys are finishing up. I'm just gonna erase some of my pencil lines so you can see. There's different things we can do to make areas for extra design. So we could just leave it like this. We've got a lot of different segments. So we know we can have a design, a different design here, a different design here, blah, 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 blah. keep going. And, or you can draw things. So on this one, I drew a moon. On this one, I drew a face. So that gives me lots of other areas to draw uh, to make more designs because every time like this mouth goes over a segment one of these vertical lines There's a spot. I can do an extra design. Here's a spot. I can do a design. Here's a spot the other thing I like to do is to um, Make it look like let's see that's more visible in this one like, you know, if you've ever carved a pumpkin, you cut the top off. So you can do this sort of thing. And that gives you all these extra segments to draw designs in. So let's go for it. Um, you can do what you want. If you like this moon shape, all I did was I drew a ginormous C and then made the ends pointy and made a big moon in the center. I think this time around, I'm gonna do a face. So I'm gonna do the typical triangle face. And if you want to use your pencil first, you can. I'm just going to freehand it with this pen and see how that goes. And I'll make a nose. And instead of a smile mouth, I'm just going to do a circle. He's a surprised pumpkin. And then I'll uh, divide this up just with some lines that go up into the swirl area and just stop when they stop. And then that gives me extra areas to do designs in. And then if you wanna do the top thing, little scallops like this across the top is a real easy way to do that. Now I could do other things. I could draw other shapes. Um, if you have things in your house to trace, like cookie cutters would be cool. Um, anything with a shape, like I've got little paint bottles with lids, I could trace the lids. You can do, like you could fill this whole thing with circles or whatever you wanna do. I'm trying to think if I could fit a moon in here somewhere. I, I think I'm just gonna leave it so it doesn't get too complicated on camera. But now I'm going to start doing my little doodles. Now there is a, there is an actual program that is, I think it's called Zentangle where they do this. Zen doodle, Zentangle. Um, some people call it like mandala drawing. So if you want to ever look that up, you can look up Zentangle designs and there's all kinds of catalogs of designs online. So if you need ideas, that's a great place to find them. Oh, my computer's dying over here. I just wanted to look at something real quick. Okay, one of the coolest, cutest designs I wanna do is a little more complicated than just circles or dots, but I love little cats. So I'm gonna do a little triangle, like that triangle, two triangle ears. Then this is gonna come down like this. So that was easy, just a little scoop at the bottom. You can do whiskers and then two little dots. And I like to make them facing different directions. Okay. 
Just the simplest little cat face. And then like you can even do like if it's a pattern that maybe it continues on like you would see like with a fabric, like fabric that's cut into a quilt. You don't, you know, there's parts that are cut off. I always like that look. So that was easy. That was easy and pretty darn fun, if you ask me. <laughs> the other thing I like to do is hearts. And remember, you can do like half hearts. So it looks like a continuous pattern. Here's maybe a little top of a heart. Maybe there's a little one over here. Spiders, that's another idea. They're so easy to draw. All you do is you draw an oval. You can fill it in. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can do a spider with a spider web. Spooky. Spiders are not my favorite insect. I'm trying to learn to like them. Because <laughs> there are some that are, when you see them up close with their fuzzy bodies and their big eyes, they're actually kind of cute. So I try not to squish them, I just let them outside. Or have somebody else let them outside. <laughs> okay, so let's see, what else can we do? I'm just looking at these. Oh, here's one that was fun. Little witch hats. There's little spiders. Little Jack Skellington faces, little bats, little half moon shapes, candy corns. That looks like maybe it was like supposed to be Frankenstein. Stars. This is one of my favorites actually. It's really easy and it's very impactful. I think it looks cool. I'm gonna do one like that. So here I've got a big long area. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do these wavy lines like this. Like ramen noodles. And they don't have to be the exact same wavy. They can be different. Running out of room. So then I take and just do black dots like maybe every quarter inch or so. Try to make them evenly spaced. Bing bong, bing bong. You can make sound effects, why not? As long as you're not annoying anybody. Art can be quiet or it can be a little louder if you make sound effects. So easy, but look at that, it looks really neat. Liking that. These bigger areas is where I'm gonna have to come up with a design that's easy. <laughs> but these little areas, this is where I love to do like, okay, so I'm gonna do some horizontal stripes. And one thing I love to do here is switch the direction of those stripes. So that makes it look pretty interesting. And maybe I'll do that over here too. I'll turn it to smear. I have a bad habit of resting my hand on my project. So I oftentimes end up with a lot of paint or ink on my hand in a smeared project. That's kind of cool because it looks like eyeballs and he kind of looks like he's uh, cross-eyed. <laughs> Another pattern I really like to do is the kind of diamond pattern. So I'll do stripes this diagonal way right here and then stripes this diagonal way here. Now for the mouth. I could color the mouth in solid, or what could I do there? I'm gonna do maybe a little polka dot pattern. He's eating little candies. He's eating sixlets. <laughs> Actually, they kind of look like teeth going around. That's funny. One of my other favorite designs to do are, like I'll, I'll do a bigger segment. So I like to do curly cues like this, and each one will come off of the first one, so they're all attached, and they might spiral different directions. And they can be different sizes too, so right here I would put a tiny one, 
But see how they all start from this one and spiral off of each other and sometimes go different directions. You get the hang of it, it takes a minute. It's a fun way to fill spaces though. Then you can always go back and add in any like filler spirals that you might need. Oh, that one will have to connect there. I kind of got off my connection track. Our hands are maybe going to be a little fatigued after this. It's going to feel like we wrote an essay. We wrote an art essay. Yeah, I like that. Now I got to find something clever to do in here. You know, I think I'll do a smaller, tighter design in here. So I'm going to do stripes to just follow the angle of this outside edge of this eye. And I don't have to do the same over here. I'll do something different over there. Mm. I'm just looking at other designs that we've done. Maybe I'll do little half moon shapes. See how I'm facing different directions? The half moon shape is probably good for a larger area but it works right there I guess. I love this one particular design here that's ghosts and it's really easy to do. You start with one and you build off of it. I'll show you how to do that. So how about right here? This little skinny area is a good one. So I'm going to start with one sort of arched ghost shape. Put eyes. You can put a mouth too. Then another one's going to float off of that. Eyes mouth and one here so they're just a bunch of ghosts that are really squished together <laughs> you can even make them like wavy they all just cram them in there they're all stacked together no wiggle room here Room for one right here. <laughs> I love it. I feel like I need to do another wavy one. Getting up to the top. There. Okay, so part of this is filled up. Let's see, how about, I really like the, the different size circles in this one. So that might be an option. I'll do that over here. See, see I kind of skip around a lot. I like to do it that way. I don't know why, but I've always done that with paintings. I'll skip around. Get tired of working on one area. So I'll move to a different one. Work on it for a while, then move back. <laughs> so see how I'm just putting large dots in or circles and then I'll put in smaller ones in between. Okay, how about up here? I feel like I need some tight stripes up here. Like I have those. I like to have some of the tighter patterns mixed in, the more detailed patterns mixed in with some of the larger, more open patterns. 
just makes it more interesting to look at. Another thing that's easy is you can just do little uh, like stars, little black dots, little black stars. Actually, it could look like someone sprinkled pepper on this. And these don't all have to be the same size either. You can have some that are just tiny little dots and then others where you kind of swirl your pen around a little bit and they're a little bigger. And you can repeat any of these. So let's say maybe you really liked these little half moons and you want to have them somewhere else. Well, let's go for it. How about right here? Drawing them backwards for me is so weird. This is, we have waxing crescents mixed in with waning cres crescents with the moon. You guys should learn the moon phases. It's kind of cool. At home I got a, last year, Christmas, I got a moon phase calendar. So it'll tell me, oh, tonight the moon is in waxing gibbous or new moon or full moon. It's really neat. Fun to keep track of it and look at it in the sky. So here I'm going to do little scoops that follow the that original scoop there. And then you can do these big dots that have like smaller rings inside. So like it's they look like donuts. Yummy or bagels. Up here and just my center is just going to be a dot because they're getting real small way up there. Oh, what else? One of the patterns I really like is this one right here. I think that's pretty cute and fun. Where do I want to put that? Where do I want to put that? I, kind of, I think I want to put it just looking at this. Maybe I'll put it here. So I'm going to go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this curve as best as I can. And each line will follow that curve slightly. And then these lines are going to turn into like little plant vines. So right about here, I'm going to actually start slightly curving this way. So pretty straight up and down in the middle here. And now they're going to start curving a bit this way. Okay, and what you can do is do little upside down V's. And then on this one, I'll do right side up V's. So it kind of takes on this vine-like appearance. So then I'm going to go back to my upside down. I just try to evenly space them. Like mine are probably about a quarter inch apart. But it doesn't have to be exact. I feel like I could put one right here. Now back to V shapes. The normal V. Right side up V. Did you guys know you can actually use acrylic paint and paint your pumpkins? You just make sure that they're room temperature because it won't adhere if they're, they've been outside and they're cold. And you have to clean them. So I just would give my pumpkins a little bath in the kitchen sink and let them dry, come up to room temperature, wipe any excess condensation or anything off, and then you can paint them with acrylic paint. You just need to, if you're going to do multiple coats, which a lot of times you'll need because the first coat of paint can be kind of transparent, you just let them fully dry, let that paint coat fully dry and then you can paint a second coat on top because if you don't let it dry, then your second coat of paint is not going to stick. I like these little daisies and those are pretty fun to do. You can just do it. Look at how elaborate my <laughs> new one is becoming.
It's just a series of a bunch of loops that start from the same center. Most of you guys probably know how to draw flowers pretty easily. It's one of the first things that I learned how to draw once I conquered stars. I remember stars being really hard. Um, leaves. So I haven't done leaves yet. I've got this nice spot here and it's like almost the exact spot. Now this one, you can do them um, facing all upwards or different directions. Like I like that. See that? How that I can make them like they're falling because it's fall. They're just little almond shapes or eye shapes, whatever helps you visualize that. And you can make some that are, you know, off on the edges, like half a leaf. And then you just want to go back and divide them with that leaf vein. Later on, after you paint this and you have more time to play around with it, you can you could do little designs in between these, like little polka dots like these, or little rings, circles, little cats, whatever you want to do. I am almost done with getting my little doodles done. I'm gonna do, there's one design I like that's kind of like a tall rainbow and you just keep going and like I'll do three and then I'll do another one, start with a rainbow, keep adding. I'm sure this has a name. Zentangle Company names their, their doodles. It was pretty fun. I, when I had my studio, we hosted a Zentangle artist and they taught us how to how to do this and they really have it dialed down. It's pretty cool. All the different things that they do and all the different patterns they have. So I guess I'm just doing a little plug for them. <laughs> now I've got just these three little areas left. Here, I'll do stripes. Maybe this one will do like a checkerboard pattern. And if you want, you can even do the thing where you color in every other square so you truly have a checkerboard. That's cool. Actually, I think I'm gonna do that here too because I discovered that a little late that I really like that. <laughs> now I'm gonna make it really hard on myself. I think I'll probably color this in later, my every other square, because I don't wanna take too long before we start painting. But yeah, I'll probably go back and draw a line through here and then do this pattern. So you guys can just keep, I'm gonna stretch my thumb. For some reason my thumb gets really sore with this. I must grip my pen really hard. Don't be like me. Now, if you wanna do these fun curly cues and the candy corns, we'll do those real quick. I've got a, little area pencil I want to erase. Keep finding more. <sighs> okay, so I just do a little, this is totally optional. You don't have to do that at all. If you don't trust yourself to, to uh, execute that, <laughs> I'm sure you can do it. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. But let's talk candy corns. So yes, they are triangular shaped, but they're not sharp triangles. They're more of a tall rounded. So like they're an isosceles triangle, which is the tall where there's two sides that are long and then one that's short. But instead of having sharp angles, they're rounded or half the time broken <laughs> if you buy a bag of candy corn. So I will start by just gonna do, see how I rounded that? And then I'm gonna round these edges. That's a really big candy corn. And then I like to do like three of them. Maybe they're just, stacked by each other. This one, maybe they're overlapping just for fun. And then I'll do a slightly rounded line for the, this is yellow later and then this is white or you can do, you know, any color you want. I really like the ones that have the chocolate on the bottom. And I swear they do taste chocolatey. So it's hard to tell. It's like, does this taste like normal candy corn or, or is it chocolatey? Cool. Yeah, so this is a design you can keep going on later. Like you could add a whole background and um, it's really cool. I think it looks so fun and especially when we paint it. I do paint mostly solid colors just because it really makes the pattern stand out. Like it can become 
too complicated to look at. I know it's, that sounds funny looking at it now because it's really complicated to look at. But when you color in these segments, then it will kind of come together a little bit more easy on the eye. <laughs> so I'm going to start doing that now. If you guys need to pause the video to catch up, please feel free to do so. Let's see, we've been, it's been about 35 minutes, so that's great. Time-wise, perfect. I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to dip it in the water, and pull my watercolor tray over here. Now there's different colors you can mix. This has all the colors of the rainbow plus, oh, what is this color? I think this might be brown. Yeah, that's brown. It is so dark, it looked just like the black. And you've got your palette here where you can mix colors. So if you wanted like a, a different purple than this one, you can mix blue and red and you'll come up with a completely different purple. And you can just decide if you like it or not. You can mix orange and yellow and have a very vibrant, I think I did that right here. And I'm going to start, I'm going to start with the smaller pieces so that they don't get lost in the mix. Let's see, I'll go with green. I'm going to fill in the nose with green. So I wet my brush down. It is good to dab it on your paper towel just once or twice so you don't end up with, what you don't want to end up is with uh, globs of water that are stuck to this metal part because they'll start dripping down and splatter on your work which can sometimes be a happy little accident and look kind of neat. And other times can be a little bit of a, something you don't necessarily want. So what I like to do is use one color for a while. So I had green on my brush. And now while I've got green, I'm gonna paint other segments that maybe I want green. A drop of water in here. Let's see. So you can see I paint right over the patterns. Like I'm not going through and like I'm not going to go through and paint all my leaves green because that would be a long time. This would be a much longer class <laughs> than it's going to be. Um, but you can do that on your own if you want. I'm going to do this part green. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually put a little paint on and now I'm going to dip my brush in water and I'm pulling that little bit of green apart around. So what this does is it makes a softer, more pastel green because it's got a lot of water mixed with it as compared to this one, which is doesn't have a ton of water mixed in. Do I want green ghosts? You know what, I do. I want yellow green ghosts though. So I'm going to take, I'm gonna swirl my brush in the yellow, put some yellow here on my mixing palette. The yellow is kind of gritty because when I wash this, this part out, I dried, the yellow had like a bunch of water across it. So I tried it with a paper towel and it left paper towel residue on it. So now I'm gonna mix a little bit of green in there. I feel like I could even go with a little more yellow. So just be careful, like what I'm doing, I'm kind of bringing my, my wet brush across my design. That's probably not a good idea. So I try to mix it close to my water so I'm not running into adding unnecessary <laughs> drips of water. Yeah, this is the green I want. Slimer, Slimer Green, like Ghostbusters Slimer. These are all little Slimer ghosts. And I've got a bit of this left, so I'm gonna use it. Put that up here. Maybe over here. running out of paint now. <laughs> Part of the thing that's good with skipping around when you color these in, so if I had immediately gone 
from um, painting this dark green to doing this segment instead of painting over here and here. This would be too wet and they can the colors can bleed together where they meet. So it is really good to jump around while you're filling this in. So this was my area I said was stars. So I think I'm gonna paint that blue. Like a blue sky. I think for me, the hardest part is deciding what color I want to do where. <laughs> now I gotta find something else to be blue. How about right here? And right here. Oops, just put my finger in there. So that way these two can look like the pupils of the eye and they're the same color. So then you get that like cross-eyed look, which is fun. So I'll probably paint these outside edges a different color too, but I don't want to do that immediately because this is too wet and they'll bleed together. So I'm going to paint my cats now. What color? How about purple? I'm a big fan of purple. This is a real pretty one too. Oh, I love that, that is a great purple. Some paint companies don't make super great purples and I don't know, it might be a color that the pigment's kind of hard to get right. I've had a hard time finding perfect purples, primarily with uh, acrylic paint. Okay, you know what, let's see. How about this area with the moons too? And you can turn your project, like a lot of times I'll turn my project around just so I can meet, uh, like reach different areas. Your project is not glued down. At least I don't think it is, right? <laughs> Some people tape their watercolor paper down. You can do that. You can use like painter's tape or masking tape and just tape the edges of your paper down so it doesn't warp too much. Okay, decisions, decisions. I'm gonna paint that mouth. What color? Maybe I'll mix a color. Let's see what, what kind of purple this makes with the blue. Wash my brush between colors so I don't pollute my tray too much. So every time I'm reaching into a new color, I'm gonna wash my brush. This makes a very muted purple. So it's not a super vibrant purple. You can see it's more of a grayish. And you, you could add more red to this. And let's see what happens then. I'll use that here. Yeah, that's kind of a fun color, I guess. I guess, I'm undecided. <laughs> it actually is kind of a, what I would call mauve, like a smoky pink. Kind of a grayish pink. Funny how the blue kind of turned it gray. It just always depends on what tone the blue is. And blue is one of those paint colors where there's so many different shades. Green too, there's so many different shades of green. It's almost impossible to match if you were like, let's say you painted your wall green at home and you needed to go back and try to match it. There's so many different shades of green. It's really hard. I actually really like that color. I'm vibing with it. All right, this side, you know, I haven't done orange and we are painting a pumpkin after all. So how about we get some orange on there? This particular orange in this brand of watercolor is very, um, it's kind of a burnt orange color, which is neat. Don't know what Crayola's is like. It's been a while since I've worked with Crayola. So I'm 
got that segment filled in. Now I'm going to jump around somewhere else. Let's see. And what color? You know, I'm, I was just using orange. Let's, let's make a yellow orange. So I've got this little section empty. I'm going to use my watered down brush and just add some orange in here. Wash that off. Poke it in my gritty yellow. Maybe this yellow is just gritty. I can't tell if it's paper towel that got stuck in there or if it's just gritty. Oops, see, I just broke my own rule. I put orange in my yellow. If that happens, you can just clean your brush and just use a clean brush, just scrape that out. This section looks like it's longing to be orange yellow, the yellow orange color. <laughs> Got a lot of water on my brush, so it's kind of blobbing on here. If that happens, you can Blot your brush on your paper towel and you can use just your damp brush and kind of pull that excess water away. It works just like a sponge. And look at that. I'm going to do this segment that color too. This is also a good candy corn color. I feel like it needs maybe a little more orange mixed in it. So it's closer to this. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Throw some orange in there. How about even a little red? Let's see what that is. Now I have the feeling the red is gonna really overpower it. So I'd use just a little at a time. Oh yeah, that's a good color. Get all the way to the edges. <laughs> Again, I've got a lot of water here, so I'll, look at that. So I'm just gonna suck that up with my little brush sponge. We'll let those dry and then we'll paint the bottoms yellow or whatever color you wanna do. I think I'll paint this section now. What do I wanna do? Do I wanna use brown? Not really, I'm not, I think I do wanna use brown on the bottom of one of these, but brown is not one of my favorite colors. I shouldn't say that. Let me give brown a chance. All right, brown, you're up. You're up. How about the spiders? It's not so bad. This actually is a really good brown if you're painting a natural landscape. This is a good one. It's not too reddish. Now I can't paint this yet because I don't want it to bleed with that. So I'm going to paint this section. How about blue? I didn't really do much in blue. I think this needs to be red. You know, I haven't painted anything solid red. Oh boy, how oh, funny. Oh yeah, I like that. Hearts make me think of Valentine's Day, which makes me think of the color red and the color pink. And you know what? I was gonna leave this white, but it really kind of gets lost back here, so I'm gonna paint it red too. Oh, and I've got this, how about, it can be red too. These can all balance each other out. But this section, what do you wanna be? I'm thinking because of leaves. Oh, gosh, leaves can be orange, it can be brown. We don't wanna do brown because we did brown right next to it. I guess I'll just go with, I'm looking at the different colors I can mix. There's a lot, I could do it. You know, let's do a blue green. So I'm gonna take off some blue, just swirl your brush around there, plop it down wash that brush. 
You don't need to dry it, just use the water that's on the brush. Scrape off some green, swirl it around. Oh, that's pretty. I feel like I can add a little more green to that. So this is making a color called teal. And it's such a pretty color. Oh yeah, I love that. You can play around with this too. You could add, keep adding green or keep adding blue and you can make several different shades of teal. So I'm just being a little bit careful around here because I can see those spiders. The brown is still a little bit wet. Got some purple in there. Well, let's see what happens. So what had happened was when I washed out my paint tray earlier, some of the purple that was in here didn't completely get washed away. So now that I've been swirling my brush around in it, it's come back to life to haunt me. <laughs> and this is not so bad. I it can have kind of like almost like a tie-dye effect, a blended kind of gradient effect. We'll just call it that. Almost done. Okay, I really think this is really fun. I love these cats. My gosh, they're so cute. They're just adorable. Okay, so we can work on the candy corns real quick while this dries. And you can paint the bottoms of them whatever you want. So I said I really like the chocolate ones. So I'll paint one with brown. That didn't have quite enough water in there. Maybe I will do the top of this one brown and the bottom brown too. Lots of chocolate. This one will be a classic candy corn, so it's gonna have the yellow bottom. I hope I got my color order right. <laughs> I happen to love the ones that are shaped like pumpkins, that are candy corns that are shaped like pumpkins. You know, I'm gonna paint the top of this one yellow too. It's like, I love the look of them and I love the idea of them in that first bite, but they're so sickeningly sweet. If you eat one, you're like, Ugh. <laughs> no more, no more. Okay, cool, loving it, looking good. Now, I have this very large segment here. It needs to be a good color, good color. So it can't, I don't want it to be blue or green or that color. I want it to be a different one. So I'm thinking just because of Halloween and pumpkins being orange, and I only use, really only used orange in this one segment. I'm gonna do orange. I'll just stir it into here because I've got a little yellow mixed in here and I think that'll be fine. I could even add a bit more yellow. How about that? Let's do that. Or I will do that. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. All right. So just be careful around any dark areas, especially like right here. This is probably still a little bit wet. Watercolor does dry fast, which is nice. And one thing that's neat about watercolor is you can come back later with a wet brush, even years later, and <laughs> you can reinvigorate oh, the hair. You can reinvigorate the watercolor, so I could come back and like refresh this just with a wet brush, but I'm probably not gonna do that. One of my favorite things to do with watercolor paper is um, I use wet coffee grounds, like after I've had my coffee, and I put it all over the paper and I let it dry overnight. I try to tape the paper down so it's mostly flat because it'll warp like crazy from the water and the wet coffee grounds. And then the next day it's dried up and you can just sweep those coffee grounds off into the garbage or the sink. And you've got the coolest coolest stain. Let me grab one that I did because I just happened to look up and see one. Right here, this is one that's stained with coffee. And this is a character called Mono, 
I think, from Little Nightmares. My daughter plays that video game and asked me to draw it. But look at that coffee. Isn't that really cool? And, like, it probably even smells like coffee. If I got my brush wet and started playing around with it, it would <laughs> smell like coffee. <laughs> but keep that in mind. That's just a super cool, arty thing you can do. That's simple and it, it's kind of fun to work with things other than paint. Like, hey, coffee. I've done it with a tea as well. I have this special kind of tea. It's called a butterfly pea flower tea and it's blue and it stained the paper just like, like I showed you with the coffee, but it was blue, different shades of blue. Super neat. Okay. I'm ready to paint these outside eyes and I'm gonna make them the same color and I'm going to make them purple. I just decided that when I looked at those purple cats, I thought, you know what, that's gonna balance this out really nicely. That's a lot of paint. I keep putting my hand in the candy corn and it's sticky and it's sticky just because of the wet paint that's drying. Did I get everything? I think I did. Wow. I like it. It looks pretty cool. And this is where after everything dries, you could go back with your pen and let's say I could fill those hearts in with black or I could add extra things. I could add little dots in between each of these vines. Anything that you want to add to it, but you have to let that watercolor dry or it will be a bit frustrating. And then go back and after everything's dry, if there's any pencil lines that are still peeking out, you can take care of those, but that's our cool pumpkin design. I thought that would, turned out really cool. I actually like it better than this one, even though I really did like this one with the moon. I think the face and having that top like that is really fun. So thank you guys so much for joining. I hope you'll use your other watercolor paper from your kits and uh, make another one of these or maybe make a cat and de design the cat in all kinds of different things. You could draw the cat and then use, you know, anything that, any shaped object, like it's something you can draw circles on the cat, moon shapes, and then you have lots of little segments and shapes that you can do with some of these new designs you learned. So I guess I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a happy Halloween and the rest of your holidays coming up. And we'll see you for another class later. Bye-bye.